Am I really that misunderstood? Really? Now I can't tell people to support the military? Wow. When you know things are getting bad, you can't even mention supporting the military or you get crucified. Jesus Christ. Well, guess what? I ain't backing off of that. My son was a Marine, and he did what he had to do. And I'll say support the military forever. Just like I'm going to say Merry fucking Christmas forever, too. I'm not going to say Happy Holidays. I'm going to say Merry Christmas. <clears throat> so that's what I think of that. You know, the last thing I want to do is block anybody, you know what I mean? But when you come on my channel and call me an asshole, you know what I'm saying? Or you come on this channel and you try to make me look like a douchebag, you're out of here. I'm not on YouTube to argue and to bicker back and forth with these fucking guys. They're just, they're people that are, they're, 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 they're just not happy with their lives. They're miserable people and they just love drama, you know? It's just ridiculous. Um, when I say support the military, yeah, anyone can dig dig through the box and look at something the, the military did bad one or two times and bring that up and say, well, well, do you support that? That's what I'm talking about. People like that, they really they, they really don't, don't need to be on the internet because uh, you're nitpicking, man. You're nitpicking. It's just a general statement. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I don't know if you recognize these these rounds I have here. They go to a FN57. Did I buy one? No, I did not buy one. Do I want to buy one? Yes, I want to buy one. Very, very good friend. Uh, it, it's a loner. And uh, we're going to shoot that as soon as we find a place that allows me to shoot this high-velocity ammunition. Uh, I don't think it's that devastating that it can't be shot at a gun range. I think it's ridiculous. Because first of all, that super high velocity ammo is for law enforcement and it's not available to civilians. This that they sell to civilians, I think is fine in an indoor gun range. So uh, I'm working on that. Okay. Um, I was at the gun shop yesterday looking for a 1911. And I just can't right now, I can't find a 1911 that I really want. Because they're a lot of money, 1911s, as we all know. And uh, I'm trying to take my time more when I buy firearms. Because, uh, you know, I trade and buy a lot. And I'm, I'm getting tired of doing that. I'm tired of losing money. I'm tired of trading guns in. And uh, I'm just tired of it. The one good thing about it is, though, you got to admit, if I do have a gun for years and years, that must be a fantastic friggin' firearm. You know? So that you can at least you can there's always something good you can get out of something bad. At least if you see me with a gun, well like more than five years old, you must say, damn, that must be a hell of a gun for Pete to hold on to that that long. And there's only one gun in my safe that's that's that old, is that's the SIG 226 Elite stainless. So I was looking I'm looking for 1911s and only one really knocked my socks off that I seen and uh, it was a special edition, not a special edition one, but not one you see a lot. It's the Remington R1, but it ain't the regular one. It's the Remington R1 Enhanced. Enhanced. I'm not a fan of the regular one. I just don't care for how it looks. Feels like a nice gun. The trigger feels phenomenal. But I'm just not big on the uh, the uh, walnut looking grips and the and the uh, the silver trigger and, uh, and the big giant bushing it has on the front. I just I just don't like. For me, it's not my taste. I don't like it. Then I seen one, it was called the Enhanced. It was all blacked out with these beautiful, high quality, beautiful grips on it. I mean, it looked awesome. It was like a package deal. And they had this other one that it had a threaded barrel. That thing was beautiful. That thing was like a thousand bucks. So like, you know, I didn't have that kind of money for that kind of stuff. So I'm just gonna have to wait a while, see how things go after a few months. And um, if money picks up, we'll get something like that. But in the meantime, I'm looking in the gun shop, and I said I would like to get another tiny little carry gun. One I don't care about scratching up. One I can just throw, throw on my hip right away, and it ain't gonna be pulling my pants down and all that stuff. And a little gun, you know what I mean? So I'm looking at it, and I see something. And I was always afraid to buy these, but I always heard, I always knew in here, 
I always knew they were good quality guns, like high quality firearms, but I also heard how finicky they could be. They could jam, they have a, they have a pretty, pretty brutal break-in period, because they might jam a lot during. I heard all kinds of stories about these guns, good and bad, good and bad. Uh, I did a lot of research on them, seen a nothing fancy video on one, it was very good and got great reviews. I watched Hickok's video on one, he's very pleased with it. So, you know, and I watched a couple other guys too. Uh, videos that uh, did a video on on um, with um, Rebelcraft. He did a video on one, and these guys are really uh, happy with these, and uh, they're shooters, you know. So I mean, the best thing to do uh, to check a gun for reliability is watch people's channels who shoot their asses off. You know what I mean? I don't. I shoot, but I don't shoot a lot, so it's hard for me to give you an accurate answer it takes me a long time to tell you if a gun's accurate because you got to wait months and months and wait for me to shoot it a lot so that's what i did and uh you know good versus bad um it was like you know the good outweighed the bad so here it is just picked it up got a really really good deal on it and the reason the other reason why i bought it too that is a car pm9 uh, i kept i keep hearing good things about this gun uh, i hear a lot of bad things about this gun um, there's certain quirky things about it that people don't like, like how you have to chamber the first round or sometimes it doesn't load it in the chamber right. Uh, this one's not doing that. Uh, this one you can rack the slide and manually load uh, a round in the chamber, but the manual suggests is you should have the slide locked back, put the mag in, and load the chamber by releasing the slide release like that, uh, which is fine. So. This is slightly used. Uh, you guys know I don't really buy used weapons too often, but uh, here we go again with the sirens around here. This this place is going nuts. That that fire siren that went off tw twice already, and, and it's only ten o'clock in the morning. So, man, I don't know what people are doing. Um, where was I? This was used, uh, it was slightly used, it's brand new. Um, the person that had it couldn't really shoot well with it, it was a female, actually it was a, a female uh, police officer, and uh, she just wasn't that thrilled with it. And uh, I asked Mike, uh, is there anything wrong with it? He said, no. I said, well, can I shoot it before I buy it? And I said, most likely I'm going to buy it. And he had so much confidence in it that he said, yeah, go ahead. Nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to go wrong. I said, well, I'm just a little leery of these cars. I know they're high quality. They're real pricey little guns. But I heard they're, they're twitchy in the beginning when they're new. So I took it in there. I put 100 rounds through it. Winchester white box, which is unpredictable ammunition because sometimes the powder charges fluctuate sometimes with them Winchester white box because they're bulk and they just throw them all in there. I don't know. If anything went wrong with ammo, it was always that. I never had problems with Remington UMC. So I said, you know what? I'm going to put a box of Winchester White Box through this thing. If it gets through that, that's a good sign because sometimes they'll have a low charge ground or something. I don't know. I was just trying to think of some kind of ultimate test to give it. And I got to tell you, shit, I left the target in the car. But I got to tell you, I was shooting about eight yards away and um, no problems at all. Not one. I put 100 rounds straight through it, and then I said, okay, I'm going to put a whole box of hollow points through this thing. I put a whole box of hollow points through it, a Hornady, and uh, it ran perfect. Perfect. Very easy to manage. Um, no problems whatsoever. Ejection all in the right, right same spot. I looked behind me, and the brass was all in the same spot, so great ejection. Now, the most... The, the most impressive thing about this is I've had polymer guns up the wazoo. I've had HKs, I have, a Glo I have three Glocks, I've had the XDs, and I've had the, uh, the, uh, the M&Ps, and unbelievable, all these, all these different polymer, polymer guns. Yeah, I even shot the Ruger SR9, which is a nice gun. But I just, you know, but uh, anyway, they all feel like staple guns. You know, some are lighter trigger pulls than the other. And the best trigger that I felt out of before I got to this was the XD. The XD was the only gun. It didn't really feel like a safe staple gun. It had a soft break. It wasn't like a boing. 
Like the Glock goes boing and the, the MMPs go boing and you know what I mean? Which is fine. But uh, this has the smoothest trigger, especially for this size gun. I mean, compared to that LC9, that LC9 definitely feels like a staple gun. That's a trigger you really need to get used to before you start, start shooting that gun well. This has such a soft, smooth trigger. I never shot the gun before. Let me go get the friggin' target. I'm so lazy. <clears throat> Sorry, I meant 9 yards. Wow, but why, why would I shoot you at 9 yards? I might as well put it at 10. That, that's what I wrote on the target. It was like a little further than 8 yards. I think I just put 9 yards. But here you go. you got to think of it this way. When you pick up a new gun, and you're holding it in your hand, and it has new ergonomics to you, because you never hold, held that gun before. It's a totally different gun, totally different angles, complete new ergonomics. Most of the time, the first the first box of ammo, you kind of shoot like shit, you know? So to shoot like this with a new gun like that, I mean, as you can see, there's, there's a lot of flyers on the bottom until I got used to it. But I got used to it really, really quick because it has a fantastic trigger. Once I found the trigger pull, once I learned the trigger break and learned what I had, I had to hold my sights, you get that result. Now there's a little three inch barrel at nine yards, put in groups like that. To me, that I mean, I mean that that's that's very satisfying to me. And there's here's here's some headshots, okay, and that's at nine yards. So I just wanted to show you that target with that little car PM9 did. And most importantly, no failures at all. So, I got a really good deal on it because it was used. And um, I didn't have, you know, these guns, they're like 600 bucks. I think they're more than that. And this one has night sights. So, this one's probably, I don't know. I don't know how much they are. 700, I guess, with night sights. Any of you guys have one of these? Uh, all I got to say is this. This one runs great. Very confident with it. And then there's a sight picture. It's got really nice big sights on there. Uh, it's made, it's very Glock like. I mean, Christ, it's it's like, it's pretty much almost like a Glock. It just, all it has is a 1911 slide stop and it has the 1911 style takedown. You got to take the pin out. It's really, it's, it's really a uh, unique little gun. And, it, you know, I'm, I'm trying not to handle it a lot because this gun is loaded. So I'll take the mag out. I got the Hornady hollow points in there. Now what they're saying is, um, with these cars, when you uh, load the first round in, before you put the mag in, it should be in this position. You put, you put the mag in, put your hand on the slide release, and then chamber around like that, then start your firing. That's what it says, that's what you're supposed to do, so do it. But, I tried to cycle it like that, and it worked fine too. So, it depends on the gun. Every gun's a little different. Some guns are a little quirky than others. This particular one that I have, I can rat manually rack it and, and put around it, no problem, and it doesn't get hung up or anything. So, I don't know. I guess I'm lucky. I don't know. But what I love about this gun, the most, the biggest thing about this gun is the trigger. It is so nice. What I don't like about it is, not much. The only thing I don't like about it is, I wish the trigger reset was a little further back. The trigger resets all the way at the end, just like an LC9. But as far as trigger comparison goes, this smokes the LC9. Definitely, as far as a good trigger. And I can, I can shoot, I don't shoot my LC9 like that. Sorry, I just don't, because I'm I'm too busy concentrating on all that trigger tension, and then lining up my sights. It takes me long to shoot like that with the LC9. There's just there's too many things I'm thinking about. This you just point and shoot, and you're getting this, because it has a nice trigger. Master the trigger, master the gun. That's what I always say. I always say that. So there's a nice look at it. Uh, the finish and all that stuff, you guys. You want to know about all that's phenomenal. It's got a great finish on it. It's got a nice strong polymer body. Very, very, very slim. It holds six plus one. I don't know how heavy it is. It's very, very light. And uh, 
I'm not gonna curse. Not gonna curse. Um, I'm not too intelligent, so I really don't know what I was talking about last. What was I talking about? Anyone know? I don't remember. Well, anyway, very Glock-like. Uh, the difference be between this and a Glock, I guess you can compare this to a Glock 26, would be the, the uh, fair comparison. Uh, way, way, way thinner. I know the Glock 26 probably holds more rounds, has a double stack magazine. Um, I'm probably, you know, I would find myself carrying this more. This is going to be way more comfortable. Uh, it's very, very easy to carry. It's a good quality gun. And, uh, I would, like I said, I wanted one of these for probably the last four years. Uh, my buddy Ron, IBS Ron has one. He loves his. And everyone I know that has one loves it. But I, I have had seen quite a few YouTube you videos where these were screwing up a little so I'm not going to say it's it, it has the reputation like a Glock because it don't but if you get one that runs well this is a fantastic option for carrying nice little package and it's a nine millimeter loving it so let me know what you guys think I know you wanted to see a 1911 but right now uh, 1911 money the one I want is just not here or the 1911 I want is not available, so it's just like that. So don't worry about that. There'll be 1911s coming back, a, a minimum of three. Trust me. Okay, I'll talk to you guys soon.